Uh, now let's just get into it. Episode 63. Uh, if you guys obviously hear us or see us, you know that this is a lot different than normal. Um, kind of a, a mobile duct tape episode again. Uh, Adam's off. Adam's maybe two hours away right now. Uh, working, working away and staying at his girlfriend's house, so. This is how the episode has to happen. He's actually down at Yankee Stadium today. He's going to have a lot yep. to share about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a game to get over the, the CCL depression. Um, the club somehow goes on after they literally couldn't score within, you know, five yards from the box, you know, 10, 15 times. We've all seen like the compilation video that we threw together of all the different chances. And then we go on to set a, a club record for scoring. It's just like, it doesn't make any sense, and part of that is definitely going to be the, the, you know, the level of opponent that we faced in each of the games. That's going to be part of the story. Um, but I think also it was a team that was probably really frustrated, and uh, you know, you can you saw that during the game too, like when Tiago uh, had that header like point blank range, and he hits it right at the keeper, and then afterwards he hammered that ball at like almost out of the stadium to be honest with you like if the if the jumbotron was not there like that thing was hitting the train as it was passing by um just out of frustration he kicked that thing as hard as he could i mean it was just to me it was the exact same game we created a ton of chances um had a ton of opportunities um you know this this game they just fell it was it was uh you know we got the luck this game i, I hate to say it but we got we were luckier today that the chances fell. Um, it would have been the exact same score, exact same you know result had we just finished versus Sounders. And uh, you know, had it has you thinking like if we just finished those chances versus the Sounders, we, we'd be looking at like eleven goals in two games and being a genuinely scary team, like the yeah. scariest team in MLS. Yeah, and I think it, it's beyond luck of even like the luck of the chances going in, but like we actually got calls that should have been called as penalties, which is something that does not happen to, to NYCFC. Um, and, you know, we do get two penalties, uh, Tati buries them both in, and we're really lucky in general just to have Tati as a player on the team because um, I mean, who scores four goals in a game in their career? Like, like nobody does that in their career. Um, it's like Lewandowski type behavior. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, I believe it was either Joe or Ian when I finally got to the, you know, correct, competent commentators <laughs> uh, that, that said it, you know, when you score four, it happens once in a blue moon and you're guaranteed a, a man of the match at that point, at the bare minimum, a man mm-hmm. of the match. And, um, you know, that skyrocketed Tati, you know, not only into a more confident, you know, um, you know, seeing the results type of mindset, uh, but it, it throws him right into the com- conversation again for another golden boot that honestly, you know, it's early on in the season, but we were kind of thinking like, we might have even talked about it on one of the episodes, like, is this thing slipping away from him? Were we, uh, you know, too confident in him for him to repeat? Uh, but he's right back in it. Yeah, I think they were saying he's uh, he's only a goal back now. Um which is great because I mean, if if you can have games like this, then he should have no problem, uh, you know, increasing increasing his count throughout the season. And it's kind of crazy because at, at halftime, you almost didn't know who even would be the man of the match. Um, I think Tati had two at that point, but Tiago ends up scoring a brace too before Tati gets his third. And uh, it, it just seems like all of the attackers this game were clicking. Like the the ball that Talas played to uh, Tiago on that that thing where he finally used his pace to like perform which is something we've been begging for out of tiago for so long um the team really yeah it's wild i mean santi santi has looked good fredo is looking good too it's it's wild for uh, you know the the headlines and the the attention and everything that's obviously going to be on tati because it was his day um Mm -hmm. i think it was equally or more important to get tiago to properly finish in front of the goal um, for him to, yeah, like you said, use his pace to get behind the defense, use, you know, his best assets for the team. I think it was equally important for him to get that in his brace um, for the squad because everyone else has been performing. You know, the only way to really make that 
that result any better. Would have been the Heber goal to to count, which it should have. Uh, yeah. Another another story. I mean, if if it decided the game, we'd probably be a little more upset about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or you know, Talis Magnus, as the real Salt Lake commentators were saying, uh, those very nice gentlemen over at Real Salt Lake. Uh, Tal- it, it, you know, if he had scored a goal, that probably would have been a cherry on top. Real in general as a community was doing their best to try to troll and upset like NYCFC fans and, and the they, team in general. They, the whole they, like the whole game. They really the thought day, that they I were like Villa Real. They thought that they were Villa Real after um, or Real Madrid after the Bayern at the Bayern after the, Bi- after the <laughs> Bayern game. Like like you're gonna troll your way into some fame, bro. You guys got choked. Yeah, no, you, you can't lose six to zero in post memes. No, nah, like you, like the perfect thing would have been to record that video and then post it after you win or draw or maybe even score a goal. One like, goal, at maybe least. we should start at scoring a goal. But yeah, I mean, between between the the memes or the fans on Twitter, um, I mean, even even the game, like uh, early on in the game, we saw Justin Merrim and uh, Tavon get into it. Somehow Tavon leaves that 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 challenge. I don't even know what to call it with a yellow card, and and Marum just walks off. Like I just that's when I I did worry a little bit that like the ref was getting a little crazy because I think going into halftime he had given out like five yellow cards, and it was like Tati had one within the first couple minutes again, just like in the CCL game, and I was like uh, we cannot start off with this guy already. Yeah, like like I was saying earlier, um, you know, I was I was plagued with. The uh, the RSL commentators for the majority of the first half, and yeah. um, they were basically highlighting the um, the dark arts that they were they were calling us dark artists is what they were saying that we were we were playing uh you know we like the with short field and you know we like to take they they basically said that we like to force the ref's hand into decisions uh to, to force us into good behavior. And stuff like that, which was just insane. They were basically saying that Tati's a wild man uh, and that he should have not been on the field, essentially. Um, yeah. But I, I just didn't see it that way. I felt it was un- I saw it the same way. I thought it was unfair in the, in the first half. And then he kind of just, the ref grew into the game, just like we did. And I saw a ton of uh, futsal comments on uh, Twitter about the size of our field, which is like, I don't know. It's always the go-to for these fans that act like those couple of yards like would have made their team not lose by six goals. You know, it's like that. That's the thing. On. It's like, all right, so we have a short field. How long have we had a short field? The entire no. time that we played there. Okay, maybe a decent coach might talk about it. Maybe yeah, we might, might limit plan for it the all size week. of our practice field to prepare for something like that. You know, it's not like it's not like the day before we're all of a sudden, you know, sending out a memo to all the teams saying, Hey, you know, we're cutting a foot or two off of our field today. Prepare yeah. for it. You know, we're going to play tomorrow. So you guys have had five years to deal with this. <laughs> Maybe we should just it's, be comp- like, be competent. It's funny because like everybody will come at us too and be like, Oh, get a real stadium. It's like, bro, we're trying. <laughs> we would trying. If we could. Like, we're on the same side as you. Uh, and, and, I think it was really funny uh, talking about like being at the game and stuff. You know, we end up going to the press conference after, and um, somebody brought up a question to Ronnie about how we'll be playing in City Field next weekend. And uh, Ronnie and I, I haven't heard him like speak in this type of way before, but he was like, uh, "I'm just glad that like we'll still be playing in New York as opposed to like stadiums like RBA, um, because at least it's like somewhat more of a home in that case." I was right. Like, Let's go. Yeah. Well, Ronnie knows. Um... Dude, the, the thing is, is, like, it's it's real hard to be Ronnie out these days, and it's something I, I mean, I wanted to bring impossible, up. Impossible, I would almost say. impossible, because you he, you're, you're never gonna get your way. It would take no. a lot. Um, just the way that he has the the locker room, <laughs> the way that he has the fans, the way that he has the the front office, dude. It's gonna take mm-hmm. a lot to get that guy out of there. Um, yeah, and I don't want to see that the happen. First, the first championship to a club like regardless of what fans think like a, a front office that's going to buy you you know a year two years three years like minimum um just just because of that alone easily and um 
you know, when you when you instantly make an MLS club the biggest team in the New York market, I mean, it's hard to do any. It's it's hard to get rid of that guy. <laughs> and your away fans listening are just not. Uh, they're not going to be pleased to hear that one. Yeah, I saw Red Bulls poking fun at us too because uh, we only scored six and not seven. Um, and they they got a fair bit of heat from NYCFC fans on it, but like their own fans were actually flaming them too. Like we like I think somebody said like we can't even score. Delete this. <laughs> like that. Yeah. The, I'm all, yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to the the next Red Bulls game that we have. Like we, I don't know. We have, we have to skunk them pretty hard in the way that we've that we've been skunked that one time. Eventually, I, the thing is, is that was you know, that was such that was so long ago. What was that twenty sixteen seventeen? I mean, so long. That was so early in NYCFC as a club. Like, if you look back at it, and you start naming some of the players and their ages at that point, not not mm-hmm. necessarily in our team, but like, think of like Mbappe. Mbappe wasn't even emerged as a player yet. Yeah, that's how long ago that was, and that's you're you're living and dying on a hill that nobody even wants to visit anymore. Like we got a chip, who cares? Yeah, and like NYCFC was still trying to live on the the retiring legends hill. Um, depending on who was on the team at that point, I, I think Villa would still be on the team. I think you know maybe Lampard or maybe Pirlo at that point, depending on the year, would have still been there. Like you know, it's a new it's a new era over here of of youth talent. Not to mention, nobody's talked about it. The fact that your coach, Red Bulls, from that point, from that time period, right, Mm -hmm. is now in the media wishing that he had some of our players from that team that you guys beat, it just looks bad. It just looks And living and dying on uh, uh, Jack Harrison's performance for his current job. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And wishing that that Jack Harrison had been on his team earlier. Yeah. I mean, not everybody had, had to. Yeah. Um, so it just doesn't look good. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing with this one, I, I feel like there's not really much to say, and I, I think we have some plans in the works, and I'm not sure how much uh, we can talk about it, but we did get invited to uh, be on another pod, another NYCFC pod for the first time. Um, so that's, like, super big news. Uh I don't want to name drop it because I don't know how they work with, with their releases and stuff, but uh, we will be recording tomorrow night. So Monday night. Um, and I, you know, at some point that thing will drop. And obviously if you guys stay locked on our Twitter uh, at post 90 pod, that would be the place to, you know, find out not only when this episode drops, but when they drop their episode and it's cool to get more into the, the pod game with some of the other guys and the other media. Um, met Michael Allen in person at the game today. So that was super cool. Yeah. I was, um, I was super jealous of that. An alumni of the show. I think he, well, he's, we've talked to him like three times or whatever. Um, so to, you know, finally meet him in person and put like that name to the face outside of just the virtual stuff is, is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it, and a couple other tough. guys, but yeah, it was tough knowing that I couldn't make it for that. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, you know, you, you move a couple of things and, you know, get your, get your butt off the couch. But there, there's a, there's a ton of games, though. Um, well, also, I think you know, we, not that you would fanboy over it, but you know, touching touching shoulders with some NYCFC greats uh, in the cookie line. That's you in know, the cookie line. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's another uh, that you miss out. Another on. another story for another day. Another uh, an Easter egg. Do they call them with all of the things that have come along with this? Um, right. Well, in the Easter but, spirit, um, uh, the hint for who you bumped shoulders within the cookie line resembles uh, an Easter legend, the Easter bunny. So I think we'll get that. Um, But yeah, I mean, I I think, you know, there's, there's like a lot to talk about games like this and there's not a lot to talk about games like this because you don't want to take too much from like a six nil thrashing of a, of a team that's like pretty painfully average. Um, So I think, you know, we have, we have Toronto at city field to look forward to. I think in some capacity we're uh, we're planning to be there, um, so you know you guys can stay tuned to the Twitter for that. Uh, you know we met a few of you out at the game today, or I did, um, gave y'all some stickers. So if anyone's going to be at City Field that wasn't at Yankee Stadium today, uh, let us know. We'll we'll bring them along to hand them out. We still got a couple left, uh, but yeah, I think that's it. 
Yeah, follow us on all platforms, uh, Post 90 Pod, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, and we will we'll see you next week. Peace. Yeah. See you guys. Peace. Peace.